All right, so we have now set up our login system, logout system that works beautiful well. We'll fix this error or this warning later. Oh, dot com. So we can log in, and now when we're logged in, we should now be able to use the customer. So let's just finalize our little front end a little bit by creating a customer's um, <coughs> component, I guess. So let's create a customer's folder. And then in there, we'll create a customer form. Oh, let's actually create a new file for that. Customerform.js. And we'll also get a customerList.js. And we'll get a customers.js. Now, the customers is just going to be a parent component. Actually, let's close all of this. The customers is just going to be a parent component that is going to hold both a form and the list of the existing customers. So in here, we'll just get rid of the class. We don't need it. This will be customers. And then we have our list. We'll create a function component for that. Customer list, get rid of the class. And we'll just put, uh, for now, just a UL with an LI list here. So we just, uh, well, of course, we want to replace this later with the actual customers. And we have a form. So customer form. And um, then we want to create, well, let's just uh, put just a text form here. We'll create a form later. Okay, so at least we have these components. So in this customer's component, I just want to first show the customer form. And then we'll just render the customer list. So that we just have them nicely connected in one component. And then this customer's component, which will render the other things, we will render in the path slash customers. So now we have our customers component. Cool. There we go. So form list here. Uh, let me just get rid of these warnings. That will distract me. We'll just show the component list here. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's let's um, let's first implement a form. We want to be able to create a new customer. So we need to send a name basically to the, the backend. Really simple. So I'm just going to set up a form element with an input. And the type of that input is going to be just text. And we'll put a placeholder there with uh, customer name. And then we'll have a button of the type submit. And we'll say save new customer. All right. Then we'll have some state that will hold the value. So const customer name set customer name is eu state empty string and then we have our own change is an error error function no an arrow function which will uh, set the customer name to e dot target dot value and we'll have the actual value in the input field also be equal to the customer name so that if we change the state ourselves we also change the value in the input field and then the button will submit the form. So let's create an asynchronous function to save customer. Also getting the event data so that we don't reload the page, which is the default behavior of the form. So we'll do e.prevent default. And then in the forms on submit event handler, we will handle that with the save customer function. Okay, we'll put a try and catch block here. We'll not do any specific error handling, so we'll just literally throw it to the console if there's an error. And in here, I would like to make an uh, await axios.post and we will send it to this endpoint slash customer slash. And we want to create customer data and that's going to be just the name equal to the customer name in our state here so we'll send the customer data to the backend so this should now be able to create a new customer so here's a form so let's check it out we all check out our customers documents and uh, let's see we don't actually have lisa though so let's create lisa doe and we do have an error here, but that is uh, probably from before. So I'm going to save 
don't see any errors. Network, we see customer slash. And we do see the document being brought back. So this is our JSON. And it's 200 OK. So all of, this, uh, all of that is beautiful. So we should now have a new customer, Lisa, in our document, in our database. And there it is. Cool. So that's the form working. So now I would like to list all of the names of the customers down here in, a, in just an unordered list. So we want to get all of these documents, which we can get with the get all customers endpoint. We want to loop over the array, create list items and show them on the page. Let's do that right now. So we'll go to our customer list. So whenever our customer list is um, going to load, actually I'm going to do it in the customers because um, for reasons I'll explain later. So I'm not going to have my customer list create the request and store the state for the array of customers, but I'm going to have it in my parent customers. And the reason for that is I also want customer form to interact with that uh, request. But I'll talk about that in a moment. I'll show you why. Let's actually create some state here called customers and set customers and that will be use state and it will be an empty array by default also that I will explain in a second then I will create an asynchronous function get customers GTE get customers and there we will get a customers response from await axios.get and we want to make a get request to the slash customer slash endpoint. No other data needed. Now, of course, this requires the cookie with the token. Um, and actually, the, the customer form also requires the cookie with the token. We saw that we could save Lisa though to the database, so that works. So we have been authenticated. <coughs> so this should also work with the authentication token. Um, so then we get the response and we want to set the customers to the customer's response.data, which should be the JSON array with our objects with all of the customers. Awesome, okay. So then of course, when our customer's component loads, we do want to get the customers. So again, use effect, run the following function, get customers without any dependencies. So it only runs it once and never again after the component has already been loaded. So let's just run this. Now we have not rendered the list, but we can now probably find in our components here, the customers. And you can see in our state, we now have an array with objects and these are all of our customers. So we have it in the memory. So when the component loads, if you refresh the page or if you visit this page for the first time, it will make that request. Actually, if we open up network here and I go to the customers page, you can see it makes the customer slash request. And uh, we get all of the uh, customers back, which we store in a state. So now once we get it in the state, we want to render the customers. So um, I'm going to give the customer list a property with the customers. So the, we will send the customers from our parent component to the list. We'll send the array to the list. Okay, so the customer list will receive properties, which I'm going to destructure. So we can immediately use customers. So now we want an UL and in that UL, I would like to run a function called render customers, which I'm going to define up here. And this is going to loop over the array using the map method. So if you're unfamiliar with the map method, the map method can be applied to an array to loop over the items in an array and based on the items in an array, create a new array with other items based on the original array. So we have an array with objects, but I would like to return over here out of this function, an array with JSX elements, in this case, list elements. So I'm going to return the newly created array, which we get from customers.map. And then we will apply the following function on all of the items in the array. So we get each single customer and this function will return a new item I would like to add to the new array map is going to create. So here I would like to create a list item that will be put in a new array that once we're done will be returned out of this function. And that array of list items will then appear in the UL and React will render that in order. Um, so customer has a name property. So I want to display the name dot name in the list item. Now, another thing is if you're going to present an array of JSX elements, like these list items, 
you want to give those a key and the key needs to be unique among the array so each item in the array needs to be, have a unique key now we can easily get that by just asking the uh, the index of which customer this is in the original array and i'm just going to set the key to i so the first customer will have a key of zero then it will have one then two so every key is unique otherwise react can't see the difference between all of the um list items in the array so this should actually already work we now should output an array of list items which will react, react will render in order in this position here and there we have it so we can see we have list items with the name in the ul in the unordered list now let me explain again well let me explain now so why i wanted to use the get customers and the state not just in the list because right now we just have it in the customers parent component but we could of course easily have just put the state for the customers array and the get customers function in the list because right now only the list needs it but let's see what happens if i'm going to create a new customer we'll do um someone there we go some uh, one there we go someone so if i save new customer it doesn't appear in the list but if i reload someone is there so the reason is of course only when the component is started with this use effect will we get the customers which will then update the array which will send to the list which will render the list but of course if my form has created a new customer after we have awaited this we should also call the get customers so this function i want to now pass to the form so it can run it so we update the list uh, get customers is the get customers function and then the form is going to destructure <coughs> oh my voice is going <coughs> the form is going to destructure the get customers uh, function and then after we have awaited the creation of a new customer we want to run the parent components get customers again so now if i create someone else save it immediately runs the request to the server to get the array of our customers and it displays it now if i had saved the function sorry if i had saved the get cus uh, customers function in the component in the customer list component our form wouldn't be able to access it because it's in a you know it's it's not in the same parent component so i need to have both my state and my function in the parent component so we can give the function to a child component and we can give the, the list to a child component all right well i think that is our app finally completed it's a very stupid and simple app of course but it, it does work and uh, we need to be logged in and actually in order to use all of this as we have tested so beautiful it's uh, we have now created authentication and a very very simple useless app to store names in database but sure that might be something you want of course you can make your own app on top of all of this um <coughs> Now I've kind of debated whether I want to show you the next thing I'm going to show you, but I will show you how to deploy these apps because it actually changes your code a little bit. Uh, all of the things we've talked about with cookies and cores changes a little bit if you're going to deploy it to an actual hosting provider so that other people can use it. So I will go way more in way more detail in this in my Mernstack course on Udemy, link in the description below. But I'm just going to go over the most basic things you need to set up for web security. Um, if you're going to deploy this app to an online hosting provider so that it still works because right now this, the setup we have right now will only work locally and you need to change a few things if you ever want to deploy it so i think i still want to show you that even though it's not really part of the authentication uh, story um the app currently doesn't work if you deploy it so i think i still want to show you how to deploy anyway we'll do that in the next couple of videos